Sporting Premier Panyaza Lisufi has vowed to tackle the spiralling crime rate in the province. Part of that mandate is dealing with drug abuse. Today, he launched a programme at two centres. Premier Lisufi joins us now. Uh, Premier, thank you so much for your time. About three weeks ago, you launched this uh, drug abuse helpline. Um, and today, there's these two centres that have opened. Just talk to me about how this is all going to work together. Thank you so much, Sid. I'm still uh, emotionally drained after that session. Uh, I, I, I knew we the challenges of drugs, but I didn't know that it was so deep uh, and ravaging uh, that we need to find a mechanism to really arrest the situation. And I, I want to declare, I think those that, that are still selling drugs to our children, uh, shame on them. Uh, they don't understand the damage they're causing to our country, to families, and to these young ones. Uh, they, they, they've literally destroyed a generation completely. Uh, if, if you go through their stories, their pain, their frustration, and their call for help, I'm, 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 I'm just excited that we intervened as a department to ensure that uh, we, we, we provide the necessary so the way we have arranged it, uh, you recall, Sadi, as you said in our intro, uh, we opened an, uh, an open line where parents called. Uh, we flooded with calls, over 60,000 or so. And uh, out of that, uh, there were 6,700 that needed immediate attention or immediate support. Uh, and immediate attention and immediate support uh, means they needed medical help, mental support, mental health. And some, uh, uh, the social cycle support that was needed was really at an advanced stage because they were literally collapsing. Um, but we are, we are happy that today uh, we welcomed them at various centers across the country, across the province, sorry. And uh, we really feel we should thank those parents that uh, raised their hands and also thank uh, those uh, uh, young people who also raised their hands and say, uh, they need help. But the need and agent need is massive, sadly, massive, mm, massive. Mm. Uh, and other provinces, uh, they feel that uh, they can bring their children to Hawaii. But uh, we, we really have to tackle this. Yeah. This is it, it's, a it's, catastrophe, if I have to. Uh, and as you say, it's, it's practically destroying a generation of youngsters. It's, it's dire. Uh, just just to, for clarity, did you launch rehab centres today or was it just the, the further rollout of the helpline? It's a three-phase thing that we have launched out today. It was uh, their intake, so that uh, because we've already assessed them, we know their needs. So there are those that have gone to medical institutions, there are all those that have gone to mental institutions, there are those that are at rehab. That's the first stage. And then the second stage is what we call the support uh, to indicate the areas where they need support. Uh, and the third phase, obviously, we've launched today as well, that we don't want when they've gone through the two stages of uh, uh, either medical support or mental support, mm -hmm. uh, they then relapse. So we've launched uh, skills centers because uh, at the tail end, when they qualify or when they've gone through rehab, we have uh, skill centers that teach yeah. them how to install solar panels, skill centers of bricklaying, uh, uh, plumbing, and, and all that. You make, you, I mean, you make such an important point that if, if we don't give these youngsters who've been addicted something to live for, a, a way to make an honest living, it's all too easy to slip back into uh, these, these hard habits to break. I want to speak to you um, more generally bearing in mind that we're heading into the festive season and we always worry about crime spiralling ahead of Christmas. I know that you've got ambitious plans for the province. We've spoken about it before. And I also know that uh, later this month you're hoping to get your budget approved. There's an adjusted budget just that will hopefully open the way uh, to get those sophisticated plans in place. Here's my concern, and I know that it's a lot of high tech. You believe that every street needs to be monitored. We need to set up gantries or use the gantries to monitor cars, et cetera, et cetera. We are in a city, in a, in a country, where we can't even get the basics right. We, we, we don't even get maintenance right. Uh, we know that we, we fail on maintenance. We can't keep the lights on. I'm worried that you're going to be putting the cart before the horse by trying to go for all the sophisticated technology. How are we going to be able to take these ambitious leaps if we can't even get the basics right? Those challenges are not going to be forever. 
They're not lifelong. They need to be sorted out, and I think they will be sorted out. It does not mean if uh, they mark you, Sally, and take your telephone, you'll never use a telephone again. Uh, uh, I, I think it would be self-defeating if you think that we can't go ahead with these plans on the basis that we can keep the lights on or on the basis that uh, there will be vandalism and other things. Uh, those are challenges that we must defeat. But if you're going to plan around those things, then there's nothing I'm going to plan around. It means we must not have street lights. Uh, it means that uh, uh, informal settlements that don't have uh, electricity must not have electricity because there won't be no lights. I don't think that we should plan around to those views. Uh, my strong view is that those are uh, short-term challenges. Government central is uh, procuring, is, is trying to improve the challenges of ESCOM. There is a new board, there are new loans that have been acquired uh, to solve that problem. But, you know, the issue of crime and housing, just take crime states of the country and remove housing. Uh, you'll see that South Africa can be a better place. So the, 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 the value of crime in our country is in Khauti. And until we take it, I don't think we'll survive. Uh, I'm the first one to say our plans are highly ambitious, but we have to. We have to. Otherwise, uh, we'll surrender our future and surrender our province to criminals. And uh, you will see on the 24th uh, of, of November, when the MEC for Finance tabled our mini budget, that we have literally invested. Uh, in the fight against crime. We can't be prisoners in our own houses. We can't have people kidnapped in traffic lights. Yeah. We can't have people that are robbed in houses. We can't have cars that are hijacked almost daily. And we can't intervene because we're scared of escort and other things. You're right. But, I really believe that yeah. we, we should really go out and Premier, take this so fight right. back to criminal. I, I, I hear you, Premier. You're saying we've got to get both right at the same time. It's a big ask, and I really want to see you succeed. Uh, we all do. And thank you very much for chatting to us. Khating Premier Panyaza Lissoufi.